Hey there, grab a cup of your favorite warm or cold beverage because in this tutorial we're going to build from scratch a super simple stopwatch with HTML, CSS and pure JavaScript. The final product looks like this. A minimalist style stopwatch where you can start, stop and reset your timer. We're going to make it show the milliseconds, uh, the seconds, the minutes and the hours for a better visualization of the time that goes by and will never return. I will build a project in such a way that uh, you can get involved and add new features or fix bugs. This way you can train your coding skills and get those juicy contribution points on your shiny GitHub profile. Here are a few suggestions you may want to consider. Move the timer a bit down, maybe around here, I think it will look better. You can also create some keyboard shortcuts so you can start, stop and reset the timer by just using the keyboard. I think uh, pressing the space bar can start and pause the timer and you got the idea. Alright, um, nothing else to add here. You can find the GitHub link down below. Now let's get our hands dirty and build a project. I'm going to take things step by step, starting with HTML and CSS and then JavaScript. Let's go ahead and create our first file, which is the index.html. Here I'm going to paste in the HTML boilerplate template. So if you want to learn more about what is a boilerplate template and why I chose this HTML elements as the starting point, you can check out my tutorial on basic HTML boilerplate template for any project. All right, now let's open this file in our browser. We can see that the title is here, that is good. Let's open the DevTools so we have it here for debugging purpose. But I think for this project, I'm going to use um, this live preview extension from uh, Microsoft so we can see um, the changes that we're doing right away. So you can go ahead and install that extension. I already have it enabled. Next, you can click this show preview button on the top of the screen. And this extension basically creates a local server. And uh, let me show you in a moment that if we change this title, it will automatically update it on the right side because that I changed it to stopwatch. All right, so we're going to use this one, but uh, I think uh, I'm going to use the browser from time to time just to use the dev tools. It's fine. Uh, let's go back to our editor and uh, let's call the HTML. All right, so we have the script at the bottom of the body, and uh, now let's create the main. Uh, stopwatch. I'm going to create a div class with the class I think it's gonna be stopwatch. Yeah, stopwatch. Let me close the braces. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to use the time element with a span and ID. Hmm. Let's give it the ID of time doesn't matter and our stopwatch will have the hours um, minutes seconds and also the milliseconds let's go for a thousand yeah that should be all right uh, and next up let's build the buttons so we're gonna have three buttons start stop and reset Let's create a new div um, with a class of mm, stopwatch buttons and uh, let's build three anchors. This shouldn't have any link. Uh, that would be start, um, stop and reset. 
All right. Mm, I think the HTML is pretty much done. Yeah. Let's go and uh, create the style.css file and let's build up our CSS. First and foremost, I want to have uh, a background. As you can see here on my editor, I already created this purple background. You can use whatever image you want, but I'm going with this one. And I want the body, the whole body, to have this background. So I'm going to call the body with background image, which is purple. Yeah, that one. All right. Looks decent. Not great, not terrible. Mm, next. What should we do next? Mm. Yeah, let's um, let's center the buttons and let's give them a uh, bolt onto it. Stopwatch buttons. We have text align center. Yeah, and a font weight of bold. All right. Uh, next, I want to change um, the stopwatch, meaning those zeros here. So we call the div stopwatch and the element of time. I want the color to be white. Hmm, looks pretty good so far. And display, uh, it will be block. I want to align them in the center as we did with the, set, with the buttons and the font is pretty small so I want it 100% now this still looks small 1000% this looks kind of big 200% uh, let's also check the browser and see how it looks on the browser so on the browser is it looks pretty small but let's try actually 1000 percent oops 1000 and let's check the browser yeah so on the browser it looks much bigger and we're gonna go with this one i think now i'm going to write some css so that uh, we have at least a little bit of responsiveness on our page because this doesn't look that great to be honest let's see yeah yeah i'm gonna build uh, some responsiveness here um let's see i'm gonna close this one because it's not that useful right now um Let's build first for screens smaller than uh, 700 and something. So we have media uh, max with, I think it was 767 pixels. Yeah, so I'm gonna this one. And we have our elements stopwatch and time. I want the font size to be um, 200 pixels or now let's go with half of what we have above like we have here 1000 let's have here 500 pixels and then I want to yeah, let's see hmm. anyway um, let's also change the buttons and I'm gonna have a look at it afterwards buttons um, and the anchor let's go with a font size of 20 pixels should suffice and 
but it's also add a padding because they're kind of close together and padding 20 pixels 30 pixels no 20 is fine 20 pixels all right let's switch to the browser and let's see how it looks like oh this is way too big i'm gonna have to change the pixel size 200 hmm 200 still not enough One hundred pixels. One hundred seems about right. Yeah, let's go with one hundred pixels. All right, so um, let's build another media for um, screens larger than the one we have above. So I'm gonna have main width. Uh, 768 pixels again and stopwatch time and uh, we have to figure out um, the percentage or shall we go with pixels as well hmm let's try percentage here um, 100% 100% is not okay as we figured out here ah yeah because you have here 1000% duh and here I think we should also change for font size smaller than uh, 767 it should also be percentage yep but let's test once again, um, I have to refresh the page. One hundred percent is not enough. Let's go with five hundred percent. Five hundred is awesome. Looks good. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with five hundred percent for smaller screens. Looks awesome. Right, let's go back to the bigger screens. Here on this stopwatch time we have font size 1000. Yeah, that should suffice. And actually, let's copy this one. And um, because we have um, bigger screens, I'm gonna go with 40 pixels and same as with the padding. On this live preview, it looks pretty decent. Let's also check the browser. Still pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. Looks looks good. Looks good. So I guess I'm gonna stop here with uh, um, with these resolutions. Um, next, let's change the color of the start, stop, and reset buttons because I don't like this blue color here um so let's select stopwatch buttons class and their anchor um let's see color white yeah i'm gonna go with white um font size 30 pixels 40 pixels no i'm gonna go with 30 pixels padding same uh let's give it text decoration of none because i don't want that underline beneath the the words as you see i want them gone looks good looks good um let's also add the hover effect here just so we can see that we are hovering above the buttons um uh, let's select again stopwatch buttons 
the anchor and we have the hover effect and let's pick a color hmm. Hmm, let's go with a green effect so we have this already oh this is all actually black no 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 Is this green? Yeah, this is the green one. Awesome. Looks looks good. Nice. Alright. Um let's see how it looks like on the browser as well. So the hover effect is working. We have the green colors on uh bigger screens it looks pretty decent. Smaller screens again pretty decent yeah all right so i guess we have our html and css done and we're gonna move on to writing the javascript all right let's go ahead and create the index.js file index.js all right i'm gonna close the css I'm gonna Close the explorer because we don't need it right now. <clears throat> All right, so I want this stopwatch uh, to be built upon set interval, and um, I think we're gonna have three, not three functions, but four functions: one function to start, one function to stop, one to reset and want to display the time all right um, let's create um, those functions so we have function start <clears throat> function stop and function reset um, next we need to know the state of the time meaning it's uh, is it the clock running is it stopped is it um, a fresh start like a, a new and to store that i'm gonna create a variable called state and i think i'm gonna go with uh, a string here so let's call it new for starting the timer and uh, let's add here um, the comments with uh, the other states that we're gonna have so we have new uh, running and stopped so using uh, these three states we're going to know if the clock is running, stopped, or it's a brand new timer. <clears throat> All right. And I said that we're going to have four functions. Uh, the last one, I think um, it's the one that handles the displaying of time. So let's call it display time. <clears throat> All right. So this should be our boilerplate. So let's uh, let's get it uh, uh, one by one if we start the timer and the state is running we don't want to do anything we don't want to stop the timer so let's create here an if statement saying that if the state uh, is running uh, we want to return we want to do nothing all right um yeah yeah this should be all right same with uh, stop so um if the state is stopped um, or is new 
Mm, yeah, so if the state is stopped and I mean or new, we should do nothing. We shouldn't interrupt anything. So if state stopped or um, state is new, um, do nothing, just return. Um, yeah, they should be all right. And we have to reset the timer if we stop the um, stopwatch. So I think we should create a new global variable. Um, I have to create more than one. We have to create an interval, uh, the start time, and also the stop time. Yeah, let's go ahead and create those. We have them here at our disposal. <clears throat> All right. Coming back to the stop function. Um, if we manage to stop the timer, we want to reset it. So uh, that means you're going to have to reset the timer to uh, now. And I'm going to use the date at now um, function for that. And we have to also change the state to stopped. So we know that we stopped the um, timer. And also, I think we have to clear the interval. Yeah. So say clear interval here. All right, that should do it. And let's also write the code for this um, reset function. If we reset, we want the stop time to have also the date now. And the start timer. I think it should be the same. Yeah. And um, let's imagine that we have a running clock. So if we go and reset the, uh, the clock while running, we wanted to clear the interval, wanted to clear the, uh, the timer. So to do that, we need a new statement where we check the state if it's running. We want to clear the interval and if we manage to reset the state, We want it to be running again. Or new. No, 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 not running again. We want it to be new. We want it to be new. So let's say state is new. Yeah. All right. Yeah, um, to test this out, we have to go back to the HTML and we have to add here um, an on click event and call them, uh, not the methods, but the functions. So uh, let's go with on click. Um, we want to prevent the default. Prevent default and 
then we want to call our functions so i'm gonna copy this here two times so we have start stop and reset uh yeah i think i'm missing here the double codes yeah all right let's go back to our browser refresh the page go to the console and see if something is going on all right so nothing is going on but let's test each function with a console lock. so we say start stop and reset gonna make this smaller switching back to the browser refresh the page and restart the clock now we want to stop it want to reset it yeah so they are working as expected all right let's clear them out all right awesome <clears throat> so um coming back to the start function um i want to increment the milliseconds by i think by 10 or by 100 hmm. i'm gonna figure out uh, later on i'm a bit confused about this but yeah i'll figure out no worries Mm hmm let's actually build a display time so we have something to work on we see that it's uh, incrementing the numbers we have on screen at least <laughs> all right um so i'm gonna create a variable called now and that would be made of date now minus the start time so the start time as you saw earlier is a global variable here all right so next um let's compute the hours and i think i'm gonna use math floor for that yeah that should be easier to do math floor and we have now divided by 60 multiplied by 60 once again and multiply by 1000 <clears throat> So that should be our hours timer. Um, next, let's build a minutes timer again with math floor. So we have again now um, divided by 60 multiplied by 1000 or 100. Oh, it's 1000. And I think it should be 60. And then have seconds math floor once again. We have um, now divided by. Oh, this should be now this should be in a parenthesis. Yeah. So let's go back to the seconds. It is um, now divided by 1000. 
modulo 60. Yeah. And now the milliseconds. Oh, it's actually with a double L. <coughs> milliseconds is uh, not with the math, math floor, but it's now modulo 1000. Oh, yeah. All right. So, in order to test if uh, my math is correct, we have to define the start time in the start function. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new if statement that says if the state is new, so if we just started the timer, start time, I want it to be date now. All right, so now we should have start time available. And let's go ahead and console log the now local variable and see if it works. Refresh the page and have um, zero. All right, that's right. And what about the other variables, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Refresh the page, have start. Oh, I have a typo. Seconds. Zero, zero, zero. All right, so things is not quite good. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the star function. If the state is new, our time is state at now. Mm hmm. Let's see what the string shows. Should show zero about the string. Yeah. All right. Mm, let's go back to this later so I can think about it a bit more. Let's see what we can do here. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have the stop time defined anywhere at least? Yeah. And the reset. All right. Um, actually, let's go ahead and <clears throat> create a new variable that we will output to the DOM, so we update on these zeros with the actual with the actual time that that goes by when he started or reset the timer. All right. So to update the HTML. So we have this time element here. I want to update this one. So to do that, I'm going to use document. I'm going to select the element by ID. And the ID is time. 
<clears throat> and I want it to be text content. And here goes the variable that we haven't defined yet. Let's give it the name time string and the let keyword. And here we have to compute the string that we want to output into the DOM. <clears throat> All right. Uh, this would be quite lengthy because we have plenty of variables and we have to output them as a string. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Yeah, so we have first the hours, then the minutes, then the seconds, and then the milliseconds. So let's start off with the hours. And we want them to be set to string. And then I think I'm going to use head start. Yeah, I'm going to use pad start. And check with two. And I think the second parameter should be zero. And then I'm going to append um, this one. Double quotes, no, not double quotes, uh, double points. I I can't remember the name of them. <laughs> um, and then we have to append the minutes. Yeah, append the minutes, and same as the hours, have to set them to string. Bad. Part two and the string zero, and again append, append once again the seconds, and should be the same. That's part two. String zero, append once again, and we have only the milliseconds left. And actually, the milliseconds should have the pad start of three. Yeah, not two. <clears throat> Because as you can see, we have three zeros here, and we want to start with three zeros, not two. And I think this should be it. Mm. Let's do it like this so it's more human readable. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's try and finish the page and see if we have any output so far. Huh, yeah, so I made a mistake here. Uh, I don't want it to be. Um, I'm missing the name of this. Sorry, guys, but I can't remember what is. Ah, yeah, column or. Symbol of yeah, colon. Sorry, I had to check. <laughs> I forgot the actual word for colon. Um, yeah, so the last one should not be colon but should be um, a dot. Let's go back to our page and yeah, we append it as a dot. Awesome. Uh, now we have to get our our clock working. Hmm. 
So the display time should be all right. I'm not sure about my math here, but let's uh, let's go step by step, baby steps. Mm -hmm. Let's see the start function. What we can do here? Oh. So we have to give the state of running because the clock will be running at this point. Let's refresh. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I think here yeah, I'm missing an else. So if the state is new, we say to zero. Otherwise, start time should be date now minus stop time. Yeah, date now minus that time uh, let's put this into parentheses just so I hmm. let's try once again hmm. something is moving something is moving all right Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I forgot to set the interval. Uh, so we have interval. We wanted to set it. Set interval, and. I think I'm gonna increase it by 10. Let's leave here a comment. Increase minus seconds by 10. And this should receive two uh, arguments. Um, timer handle, timeout. Yeah. So that's why I created this display timer. I want it to be used as the first argument in the set interval function so I have display time and 100 as increase let's go ahead go back to our timer and let's press start oh we have the clock moving yeah well sorry it took that long mistakes were made but we have a clock moving and looks pretty good so far not great not terrible 3.6 yeah and if we stop it the uh, timer stops if we reset it it does nothing oh all right um yeah let's go back to our stop method and see what we can do there if it's something we can improve uh, this should be all right. We have a problem with the reset. <clears throat> uh, we have a problem with the reset because we are not actually displaying the time. So we have to call the function display time here. And I think it will be displayed now. So let's start the timer. It goes by as expected if we stop it the timer stops if we start it again it runs from the last time as you can see it doesn't reset the timer so it continues um, the time from uh, where it left off but let's click reset and see what happens right so it resets the timer 
let's try it once again reset start reset start stop start stop reset i guess we have a working stopwatch guys yeah yeah so my math was correct pretty decent all right let's go over the code and see if i missed something we have the state we have the interval start time stop time we increase it by 10 are we increase it by 10 uh, i think we're gonna increase it by yeah, let's go with this one no, this is way too fast. No, no, no. It doesn't look good. No. I'm gonna switch it back. So 100. Yeah. So instead of increasing by 10, increase it by 100. Yep. That should be alright. And I guess that's it. I guess we have a working minimalistic stopwatch. Looks pretty neat. We have the basic functionalities of a stopwatch. Yeah. All right. I would like to thank you for watching the full video and congratulate you for following along and building the project with me. I hope you enjoyed the video and coding a simple stopwatch from scratch. Don't forget you can continue to contribute and code this further either on GitHub or on your own. It really doesn't matter as long as you learn new things and make progress. Have a great day and I hope to see you around.